Welcome to Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. And today what I want to do is another Big Lou review of the Barrel House Cooker 18C accessories. Hey, I got some new uh, Barrel House accessories the other week and last weekend I put them together and used my Barrel House and I made an interesting cook. I cooked uh, two slabs of spare ribs, uh, cut them down to St. Louis cut so I cooked the tips too. The next night I put the uh, tip meat in some delicious jambalaya. Uh, the ribs came out great. I used a homemade rub on it. The recipe's not important. It's just whatever rub you like to use. I use a homemade rub. Got all the good stuff in it, including cumin and ginger. Oh yeah, it's a good rub. Anyway, um, so I'm not going to show you me prepping the ribs or all that. Just show you how I hang them in there and tell you about how the uh, Barrel House performed with the stainless steel base and the lift kit, I like to call it. It's officially called the extension kit. All right, and uh, I cooked some other things too, some uh, hot links. I mean, what are ribs without some red hots or hot link sausages? And also uh, did a little snack for the kids. Let's see how they enjoyed that. Big Lou barbecue. All right, to get this grill thrill on, I started with the shiny new base, that stainless steel base and charcoal basket. The extension kit's on there too. Filled it up with some kinks with charcoal, took out a third of that kinks with charcoal, threw it into the chimney starter to get it lit, and I put some smoking wood down on there. I usually use two or three chunks of smoking wood, but look at that. That was a huge piece of oak wood that I had, and it was plenty to get these ribs a nice smoky flavor. Dumped the lit charcoals on top, put the barrel on, and go inside to do the prep work. Look what I tried out. Fish crackers in the barbecue can. Those are the color variety. All those uh, colors of fish getting along together in the same carton. We had about half that carton left and I dumped them into the can and then thought, should I spare some for later? Should I? Mm, nope, let's dump them all in there. Crumbs and everything, everything I got left and put the lid on that barbecue can. All right, once the barrel house was up to temp, um, it was about 290 on the lid temp and about 340 according to the Thermalworks smoke that was uh, the probe was set on the O grate there. That's about the way Barrel House says it should operate. Also, it was about an hour between this and the time I lit it, so I did add some more briquettes, dumped them through the O grate there. I don't show you that. I did start with two whole slabs of spares. I cut them down to St. Louis cut. I also smoked the rib tips almost every time I do uh, ribs like that. I saved that tip meat for beef beans and stews and I put this tip meat into some jambalaya. That tip meat right there was huge. Almost the whole pork belly was attached to that that slab of ribs. Hang the other one in there as well. Put some hot link sausages down on the O grate and the hot links and the fish crackers took about an hour. Now you can see there's no smoke leaking from the uh, lift kit. It works as it's supposed to. Y'all it's taste test time. Let's dig into the uh, smoked goldfish. Hannah, Eli, be honest what do you think? It's, it's good. I think they're good. Can you taste the smoky flavor? Yeah. But you, um, I think they might be wetter with whales because whales have more cheese flavor. They might be wetter with whales? Better. Better. Oh, her mouth is the, full um, of cheese crackers. The, uh, the, um, but they're all the same color. These are multicultural. Okay, I just brought these in. It's dark outside. I put them on at 6.30 in the evening and it's about 10. But there you go like that so you can see they're pretty good I didn't sauce them but I spritzed them a few times with a mixture of olive oil and apple cider vinegar and some Worcestershire sauce and for a sweetener I used Mayhall syrup that one's not been in quite as well let's see what we got here it's not too bad but the end didn't burn too much and this was the longer of the two but I think it was a little hotter on that side of the fire but you can see it's, they're doing all right. I'm gonna let them rest before we cut them. Ten and right, we'll let's right give back. them a slice. They have rested for a period of time. Probably not long enough. We will just call it, they have rested a period of time. All right. They are, Just full of smoke ring. The whole thing is smoke ring. I mean, that's not smoke ring. That everything else is just smoke ring. All I did was that one chunk of oak in there. That's, uh... Oh, yeah. Tastes almost like bacon. Mmm. I did not sauce these. If you're wondering why I didn't sauce them, I'll slice those up in a minute. You see what these look like. 
It's good to look at the other rack. That hook got stuck on my the platter. There's the other rack. If you're wondering why I didn't sauce them, uh, the basting sauce I had, I used um, olive oil and uh, Worcestershire sauce and mayo uh, syrup, and they're probably sweet enough. And I don't know if I can handle that much sweet in my life. And my son wanted sweet baby rays and all that stuff. Boy, that was not cutting too smoothly, but it's all smoke ring. These are hot, man. Hitting the bone. Look, it cuts like right through the bone right there. Look at that. Turn over the bone side now and see where I'm cutting. All right, there we go. Now they cut right. Sorry about that. All right, here we go. Works for me. Let's taste it. All right, this is the one I was squeezing for you. Now my kids, my wife, they're just off camera here. What'd you think, Eli? It's delicious. It's delicious. He did say they're not quite as good as the buttermilk ribs I did a few weeks ago. But these are definitely in the top two or three of the ribs I've done on the Barrel House so far. And I've always done pretty good ribs on the Barrel House. Almost always. Anyway. What do you think, my wife, lovely wife Shannon, who's just off camera and won't get on it? This is why I keep you around. This is why she keeps me around. <laughs> I thought it was because of my physique. Anyway, um, that too. There's my daughter <laughs> Hannah. How how are they? She don't mind getting on camera. She's yeah. in the high school drama club. You know, you could tell the YouTubers that played sports in high school, and you could tell the YouTubers that were in the high school drama club. She's gonna be good. All right, what, what do you think of the ribs, babe? I think they're good. They're not as good as like your marinade you do a lot more often, but they're really good. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, almost dropped it. It's so juicy. Look at that. Almost melts in your mouth. Tastes like bacon. Just a little bit, big old chunk of oak smoke. These are good. Big Lou barbecue. Yeah, I impressed myself with that smoke ring. They were good ribs. That's the rib tips. They made good jambalaya the next night. All right, aftermath damage report. The next morning went out, looked at the barrel. Uh, looked about like it's supposed to look. Looking down in there, the barrel looked kind of normal, even with the extension kit. If you spill something on it, it wipes off that porcelain coating pretty easy. And uh, that's what it looks like looking down from the top. Let's move the barrel and let's take a look at that stainless steel base. Had a little more ashes than normal and I sacrificed two uh, sausages to the coals evidently last night. So uh, let's dump the ashes through the, get rid of the charcoal basket and dump the ashes. Let's hose it off. Use some simple green too. Well, it's got some stains from the drippings and all, but it looks pretty darn good, I think. Well, well, just a little bit of brushing and some simple green and it's better. I'm sure a Brillo pad and some elbow grease and I can make it shiny again, but I don't really find it necessary. All right, there's your aftermath damage report. And uh, I gotta tell you, I really like these accessories. Those ribs were awesome.